to that time of year when we all show what we're made of. And warm as the weather might be getting, while the racing pretty good bet it's going to be even hotter. A good Saturday morning to you and welcome to coca Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by coca Casino. Racing radio here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Stanville. Thanks for joining us today. A special race day edition of Lap Time Live as we set the stage for action tonight out of the Diamond in the Desert, round number nine of the 2014 coca Speedway Racing Series, set to take to the track as the IMCA Modifieds, the Pro Stocks, the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks, the RV World IMCA. IMCA Sport Mods and the Napa Auto Parts IMCA Hobby Stocks are all primed up and ready for action tonight out at the Diamond in the Desert. You know, just a month or so ago, we were talking about one of the more wild nights of the year, and then well, that got topped. Uh, still a lot of talk about the last race two weeks ago at Cocopa Speedway, perhaps the most exciting of the year. Well, joining us a little later on this morning to talk about that action and the season to date, Randy Haft with N2 Photographics and the Yuma Sun and yumasun.com. Coming up on the midway point of the season tonight with tight points races across the board, and as we look back just a little, some great memories. Last lap passes for wins, side-by-side action up and down all of the five divisions, and if form holds, well, we've got plenty more of that to look forward to tonight. As always, gates will open up at 5 p.m. this afternoon out at Cocoa Speedway with opening ceremonies and race time at 7 p.m. Lots of shuffling all season long in the races for IMCA and track championships at Cocoa Speedway. And as we get set to go racing tonight, to look at the top of the standings in each division, and has been the case all season long, drivers are on the move. First in the IMCA Modifieds coming into action tonight, Bobby Horton driving the number three is your season points leader, a five-point cushion over Imperial California's Lance Murray driving the 19 SB. Horton, the winner last race out with a bold move up and over the cushion during the closing lap of the race while Mari, meanwhile, managed a nice drive back up to fourth after going to the rear of the field on an early race incident. Third in the standings, Summerton's Ty Rogers driving the 8T strong throughout that last round, had the late lead and then wound up second. Fourth in your standings, Yuma's Charles Hunt, and in the number five spot, it is Bill Miller and his number 35. Next in the pro stocks, Westmoreland, California California's Brent Ashurst, your points leader, a six-point advantage over Yuma's Joe Haynes, driving the 17Z. Ashurst, your winner, last time out with some nice on-fly adjustments, while Haynes had a little bit tough going on the top side last time out. Third in the Pro Stock standings, it's Yuma Steve Anthony with Brett Samala in the number four position, and Hamul, California's Steve Jonas rounding out your top five. Next in the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks, Chula Vista's Manny Baldivia's and his number 77 machine. Still on top of the standings, Baldivia's had a four-race winning streak snap last time out. Still strong throughout that last event, though, but eventually winding up second to Yuma's Adolfo Noriega, who sits second in the standings. Noriega, your winner last race, still right there with Baldivia's, making up one point in the standings, eight and nine point difference there. Third in the standings, Yuma's Joey Essary, who has been a model of consistency throughout the season, still looking for that first win, though. Fourth in the standings, it is the 144 of Jimmy Davey and Captain Henry B. Rounds out your top five in the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks. Moving on now into the RV World IMCA Sport Modified. Juma's Timmy Reese and his number 38 still on top of the standings. Just a two-point margin over Yuma's Josh Wood driving the J-11. Wood, your winner, last Last race and more top five finishes throughout 2014 than any other division driver. Third in the standings, the 57 CT of Holtville's Chris Toth with Raleigh's Cody Daffern in the number four position and Yuma's James Dupree, his number 84 machine, rounding out your top five. And finally, in the Napa Auto Parts IMCA Hobby Stocks, a dead heat at the top of the standings where you have a two-race tie between Craig Ebers, his number 22, and the 
number 27 of Brent Wofford. Ebers, your winner last race with a big move over the final laps to close up ground on Wofford, who had had a big, big lead. Second last race for Wofford, as noted, a nice rebound from a did-not-finish two weeks prior. Sitting third in the standings, Brian Johnson with Jason Bashirs in the number four position, and the number 48 machine of Leonard Manos rounds out your top five. Manos still out of action after a wreck several weeks ago, working on a new car and looking for a return in the season's second half. And with that, we get set for action again tonight, round number nine of the 2014 Coca Paw Speedway Racing Series, all five local divisions again ready for action tonight at Coca Paw Speedway. Well, coming up next here on Lap Time Live, we'll preview tonight's action with a little reminiscing about what we've seen so far in 2014 at, at the Diamond in the Desert. Randy Haft with N2 Photographics, the Yuma Sun and YumaSun.com set to join us next here on Racing Radio. Coca Paw Speedway is Lap Time Live, brought to you by Coca Paw Casino here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. It's Food City's three day sale. Now through Sunday, take advantage of these savings. Roma tomatoes, two pounds for 88 cents. Limit six pounds. Pork brisket ribs, just $1.69 a pound in the value pack. Guerrero white corn tortillas, 80 count for $1.99. Fiesta soda, 12 pack, 12 ounce cans, just $1.99 each. Limit four. Budweiser or Coors Light beer, 24 pack of seven ounce bottles or eight ounce cans, just $9.99. Limit two. The savings are everywhere at Food City. It's the biggest season yet. Saturday night racing at Coco Paw Speedway. Join your friends, bring your family, and thrill the war on wheels in the Coca Paw Speedway Racing Series. Enjoy an ice cold beer, great food, the Coca Cola family seating section, and free parking. Racing begins at 7 p.m. Saturday night. Thunder of race cars at Coco Paw Speedway. Visit CocoPawSpeedway.com for details and online ticketing. Now you can enjoy the freedom of clear time. A whole lot faster. Introducing 4G LTE on the Clear Talk Wireless Network. Get four lines of uncapped 4G LTE for as low as $40 a month per line. Or upgrade your current ClearTalk smartphone plan to 4G for as low as $5 more per month. Visit ClearTalkWireless.com to speed up your plan today. Clear Talk. More value, more freedom. To order stickers, SignPro can produce custom stickers with your logo or business information. Give them to your customers or label your equipment for a great professional look. That's SignPro, 783-7776, or stop by 1702 South Arizona Avenue. SignPro, where they are perfect to the letter. The Yuma Stroke Support Group meets the third Thursday of each month. Meetings are held from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Yuma Rehabilitation Hospital Gym, 901 West 24th Street. There's no charge to attend the Stroke Support Group. A stroke is a life-changing experience, and not just for the stroke survivor. The meetings are open to stroke survivors, their family members, caregivers, and friends. At the meetings, you will gain support, education, and encouragement from others who know just what you're going through. For more information, please call 726-5000. That's 726-5000. Community Matters to Z93 and Outlaw Country. Here's a look at some of the events taking place in Yuma. The Humane Society of Yuma's 2014 Four Paws Golf Classic is coming up on June 7th at the Yuma Golf and Country Club. It's an 8 a.m. shotgun start and the cost is $100 per player. That price includes skins and mulligans. It's an 18-hole, two-drive quota scramble. Sponsorship opportunities are available, too. Visit hsoyuma.com to register or find out more information. Also on June 7th is the Miss Yuma County Trunk Show. It's a scholarship fundraiser with Miss Yuma County 2014 Haley Bernardo. The trunk show takes place at the historic Yuma Theater at 2 p.m. The cost is $10 at the door and food donations are welcome. Haley will showcase wardrobe, health and fitness, talent, plus her platform on hunger. Entertainment will be provided by Tara Shea, Dancers Workshop, Jams, and a fashion show by Cheeky Boutique. You can visit MissYumaCounty.org for details. Community Matters to Z93 and Outlaw Country. 
listening to Racing Radio with Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. Once again, I'm your host, Mike Stanhope, looking ahead on this edition of Lap Time Live to tonight's round number nine of the 2014 Cocopa Speedway Racing Series. And joining us in studio this morning, it's Randy Hape with N2 Photographics and the Yuma Sun. And good morning to you, Randy. Hey, Mikey, how you doing? Hey. I thought, you, thought we were going to talk about hockey today. I, that's what I thought you brought me here for. I got boned up on my terms, blue line, body, body checking, cross checking. All that stuff happens on the racetrack too, though, doesn't it? Well, some of that <laughs> indeed does. Uh, all we need is a goalie and a net out there, it would seem sometimes. We should we should uh, put out the word. If any any one of the drivers in the Coco Possibly Racing Series can tell me what a dump and chase is in hockey, not in racing, they should call you and I'll buy him a candy bar at the racetrack. I'm going to be asking that question out in the pits tonight. <laughs> okay, go for we'll, it. We'll see what kind of answers we get. Okay. Well, hey, let's look back at that action uh, from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, most exciting race of the year, yes, no? How did you see it? I'd have to say, yeah. I mean, we had uh, three out of five main events that weren't decided until, like, the late going. And um, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm watching the X Games before I came over here to join you. And, and I'm thinking, man, this is really exciting stuff. And I thought, well, you know what? Uh, two weeks ago, we had basically anything you wanted to watch was happening out there at the racetrack. Uh, cars rolling over, uh, you know, I mean, exciting racing, guys going where they shouldn't be going to win a race. It, it, it had everything. If you're not, as I've said before, if you're not coming out to this racetrack on a Saturday night, you do have no clue what you're missing. Let's go uh, division by division here uh, for just a moment, and we'll start in the uh, IMCA Modifieds, where we potentially uh, could be looking at a big-time battle, potentially all the way right down to the uh, last race of the season, as we noted at the uh, top of the program, Bobby Horton on top of the standings, Mari in the number two position, Ty Rogers in that three spot, and uh, not a lot of separation between those drivers, and we've seen some moves up and down and shuffling within in that division all year long. Yeah, it's a it's a great division to watch. Um, I have to tell you, I, I like all three of these top three guys. I mean, Bobby's a good kid. Uh, Lance, <laughs> law of averages, one of these days and catch up with Lance. He's going to win a championship. I hope maybe it's going to be this year. I don't know. Ty Rogers is a great driver. And then the number four guy, uh, Charles uh, <laughs> Charles Hunt, Chuck Hunt. Man, you talk about a guy with some bad luck. That, that rollover last weekend was tough. Uh, I just got a text from one of his friends. He's not going to be there tonight, but he'll be there for the next race, apparently, putting that car back together. But I tell you, those top three guys, Horton, Mari, and Rogers, they're they're getting after it tooth and nail. Uh, Bobby, as we said, I said a second ago, guys going where they shouldn't be going. He was up there in the rough stuff la- uh, two weeks ago, and up above the above the cushion in the rough stuff. And somebody said they were watching the race, and he had the car on two wheels. He was bicycling it through there and held on to it. That's how good a driver he is, and made that work and got past. Uh, uh, I think it was a Russell Allen or whoever it was to to win that race. That Ru- Russell Allen and Rogers. Man, that was that was something to watch. Russell Allen. Also very, very impressive uh, that last time out, and he's still looking for that breakthrough win as well, and and he's talked lately about having found some things that are definitely working on the track. Russell Allen is a, is a, is a um, and I call it, he's, a, he's an interesting person to talk to, and what's interesting is he won the championship a year ago and didn't win a main event. It's a, That's pretty uh, pretty amazing. I mean, it's a, that tells you a lot about how good a driver is. He's very consistent. Let's uh, move on into the uh, pro stocks now. And uh, Brent Asher's on top, as noted. Joe Haynes in the number two spot. Steve Anthony back in that three spot with Samala in the number four position. And realistically, for Samala to move up, he would probably need problems by the guys running in front of him. But uh, awfully entertaining to particularly watch all of those guys duke it out each time. Yeah, the sad news for Brett is that I don't. Uh, as much as I like watching him race, and as much as, as a talented driver as he is, uh, he's not. There's no way he's going to get back to the front unless every, the top three guys totally implode. Um, the fun part here is, and no disrespect towards Brett, but the uh, the fun part is watching uh, Joe trying to catch um, Brent Ashurst, and um, uh, Brent Brent does not have it made. I mean, there is no room for for um, for uh, cruising for for Brent Ashurst. Joe Haynes is a fast driver. When he gets that top line working. Look out, man. He can come and he can beat anybody on any given night. A lot of fun to watch him up on that top line. And, uh, you know, styles make for interesting things at times, too, as we see Asher's generally likes to try and keep that car down low, although he will go up high when he has to. 
Well, you know what? Uh, uh, the same can be said for Joe. Joe is a, they, his, uh, what's his uh, nickname? Is uh, the high line. The high side hustler. High side hustler, yeah. Uh, what, a couple, two, three races ago, he was down low. Yes. He went down low, and he won, and he won a race doing that. So uh, that shows he can do both. And, and like you said, Brent is generally a, a low line driver, and he, but he will go to the top when he has to. It's, uh, it's just, uh, you never know what to expect from, from one race to the next, from one lap to the next. Well, and an interesting one, too, in that uh, car counts in the in the pro stocks, obviously somewhat low this year, but that does not detract from the on-track excitement one iota. It's still exciting to watch every time out. Boils down to you got four guys out there, Brent Asher, Joey Haynes, Steve Anthony, and Brett Samala. Those guys, uh, like I said, uh, Joe can win a race in any night. Any of those four guys can win a race. Uh, Steve Anthony's still looking for his first win, but uh, he you, you can see he's making uh, improvements, leaps and bounds. He's coming. He's running with the top dogs every night. Uh, that's an exciting division to race. I mean, four cars. Well, there's what six, maybe six or seven on, on any night. But at the front, it's always exciting. It's all. It's all that matters to me. Is if, if it's a race to the finish. And that it has been each and every time out. Let's move on into the uh, Fisher Automotive Street Stocks. Uh, and again, Manny Baldivia is on top of the standings. Noriega in the two spot. Joey Essary in the three position. Jimmy Davey fourth. And Captain Henry B in the number five spot. And again, uh, uh, we're really seeing things warm up in that division as well again. Yes, it is. Uh, I'll tell you what. Um, we talked about Brent Asher is not having any breathing room. Manny, Manny cannot be looking and cannot uh, uh, <laughs> leave anything to chance here because he's got a Dolpho on his bumper every night he's out there and uh, what I really liked last time was that uh, Dolpho found a way to get Manny around Manny uh I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that, that people were wondering, how are you going to beat Manny? Manny Baldivis, however you say his last name. It, uh, uh, and Dolfo pulled that off with that outside line, and Adolfo is a low-line driver, too. Uh, that that uh, was an exciting race to watch. My only concern is that uh, he's, he's nine points back, or and uh, that's a lot of points. As we talked about in, during the commercial break, he won the race, Manny was second, and Adolfo made up one point. It's possible. Don't get me wrong. He can still do it, but it's going to take a lot of... He's got to be consistent. He's got to do the same thing tonight. And then, as as we don't like to say, uh, wish Hope Manny has some has some bad luck. You know, and that's the only way you're going to pull it off. Joey Essery, a model of consistency. Uh, <laughs> he's been fun to watch this year. He's amazing. I mean, he's always there. What, we, last time I was on here, we talked, and he hadn't finished less than third. I don't think he still has not finished less than third. And if I'm not, if I'm wrong, Joey, correct me when I see you tonight in the pits. But man, that was one heck of a season for this guy. I mean, you talk about, like you said, model of consistency. He is there. One, uh, one other name I'd, I'd like to uh, pull out from amongst the uh, ranks of the uh, street stock drivers, and that is uh, Eddie Badia, who has shown a <laughs> lot of improvement as of late. Eddie Badia bought uh, Leonard Jones' car, and uh, and at the, the last main event two weeks ago, Eddie was up front. He was giving them a run for their money. Uh, Got to hand it to him. He, he's, a, he's a quick learner, obviously. I've not talked to him at length, but uh, he's fun to watch. He's, making, he's, he's, he's another guy in the mix there. He's making it fun. Another thing tonight is... Um, uh, Jordan White is supposed to be out tonight with his new car and uh, with his new street stock or as IMCA stock car. But uh, that will be fun to watch, too, to see how he does. It'll be nice to see Jordan back on track after yes. an extended absence. We're visiting with Randy Hafe from Into Photographics, the Yuma Sun, and YumaSun.com here on Kokopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Kokopa Casino. And we'll continue our conversation in just a moment. Greetings from the official luckiest person alive. Just how lucky am I? I want found a needle in a haystack underneath three more haystacks. Uh-huh. I also taught an old dog new tricks. Um, card tricks, to be exact. And today, I'm here to endorse the new Lucky Life Scratchers from the Arizona Lottery. They've got a top prize of five grand a week for 20 years, plus second chance prizes. Four tickets are available from $1 to 10, so get yours now. Lucky Life from the Arizona Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. Daddy, when are you coming home? It can be difficult being a service member called for duty. That's why there's the Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program. We help thousands of National Guard and Reserve members ensure their families are taken care of while they're away. Daddy, you're home! And when they return, we help with everything from job opportunities to financial planning. Learn more at yellowribbon.mil. A message from the Department of Defense. 
This message is from the Outlaw Country Promotions Department. You may win once every 30 days and only one winner per household. Winners must be at least 18 years old unless we tell you otherwise. Contests are open to everyone except staff of Outlaw Country, their immediate families, contest sponsors, and other media outlets. Prizes must be picked up within 30 days of winning and may be picked up during business hours at 949 South Avenue B. Copies of contest rules are available at the station or on our website, outlawcountry1400.com. Thanks for listening and good luck from Outlaw Country. Grab your tubes and your friends and get ready for the 4th Annual Yuma Territorial River Regatta. Float in Yuma style. Mark your calendar for June 28th. Float down begins at 8 a.m. at the confluence of the Gila and Colorado Rivers. Drivers who drop their vehicles off at West Wetlands will get a free shuttle ride back to the confluence so you can float with your group. There is also a float contest with a cash prize for the best overall float. And there aren't any size limitations this year. If it floats, come down and float with us. Categories include best business float, best military theme, pick your own theme, plus to float with the most people, an everlasting float, and even a centennial float category. If you don't want to float, hang out under the Ocean to Ocean Bridge at Gateway Park. Have your own picnic and watch the judging. The 4th Annual Yuma Territorial River Regatta is only $5 per person if you float. And there are sponsorships available, too. For more information, visit caballeros.org or call 343-1715. That's 343-1715. Join us at the Confluence on June 28th for the Yuma Territorial River Regatta. Brought to you by the Caballeros de Yuma. order stickers? SignPro can produce custom stickers with your logo or business information. Give them to your customers or label your equipment for a great professional look. That's SignPro 783-7776 or stop by 1702 South Arizona Avenue. SignPro, where they are perfect to the letter. Russ Clark, and I've got a new home on your radio dial. Tune in Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for Outlaw Talk live and local from 6 to 8 a.m. Outlaw Talk is a great forum for local, state, and national issues, ranging from immigration to gun laws and everything in between. I'd love to take your calls, too. You can call 782-4321 and share your thoughts. It's Outlaw Talk on Outlaw Country, 6 to 8 a.m., Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I hope you'll join me. It's Coca Ball Speedway's Lap Dive Live, presented by Coca Ball Casino here on Outlaw Country AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Stanhope. We're looking ahead on today's edition of Lap Dive Live to race action tonight, round number nine of the 2014 Coca Ball Speedway Racing Series out at the Diamond in the Desert. Again, joined in studio this morning by Randy Haith with N2 Photographics, the Yuma Sun, and YumaSun.com. And kind of going division by division this morning. Morning, Randy. Uh, but you had another point you uh, wanted to make uh, regards the action we've been seeing in the IMCA modified. Oh, I thought we would come back to that later. But if you want to, I'll tell you right now. Uh, two things. One is uh, I think it's interesting that Bobby Horton is the point leader, and uh, he's out of the uh, Scott Jeffrey camp, as we all know. And uh, what's interesting there is that uh, Josh Wood is uh, two points behind Timmy Reese in the Sport Mod division. And if uh, Josh can catch Timmy, that's going to be uh, two championships for Scott Jeffrey. And sorry, Scott, but you're going to be hard to live with if that happens. <laughs> the other thing is, uh, Charles Hunt, uh, uh, I mentioned this a little bit ago that he rolled over in the last race. Uh, he was basically in the wrong place, wrong time. Wasn't his fault. Um, what I want to say about Charles is I've talked to him on n numerous occasions, and he, he has repeatedly said, I'm going to keep doing this as long as I'm having fun. I hope he's still having fun. I hope he understands that just that happens every so often. I mean, it doesn't happen to everybody, but you just... Pardon the expression, you roll with it and keep on going. Uh, so, Charles, here's, here's, if you're listening, hope you're coming back, buddy, because uh, you are a fun driver to watch. We will certainly anticipate that and look forward to that. Um, you mentioned a couple of the drivers within the ranks of the RV World IMCA Sport Mods. And, again, Timmy Reese on top of the standings, just two points up on Josh Wood, winner last time out. And uh, that division has been remarkable to watch this year in terms of its growth and the growth of all the drivers within the division. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Timmy Reese, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago, he couldn't get around the track without rolling over. Not rolling, sorry, I'm sorry. He did roll over once, but uh, spinning out. Uh, uh, you talk about a guy who's made improvements, leaps and bounds, and has really come into his own and, and is a basically a student of the game is Timmy Reese. I mean, uh, he knows his stuff. Uh, he's consistent. You know, he's become consistent, I should say. Uh, he's hard to beat. When he's, when he's got everything going, he's hard to beat. Josh Wood, a uh, cool story as well after so many years away from racing and then to see the success he's had this year. <laughs> Josh Wood. If you can get ten words out of Josh Wood after a race, you're, you're a miracle man. i got to tell you, you talk about quiet and reserved and keeps to himself. That's Josh. Uh, doesn't overreact. I've never seen any emotion out of the guy. I mean, but he's got three feature event wins this year. I'm glad to have him back. Uh, we, we, I watched him back in 98, 99 in that era there, and he was um, he was fun to watch. He was just a, basically, I'm sorry, but he was a punk then, and uh, he's got his he's got his stuff together. Like I said, I'm sure a lot of it has to do that he's racing with he's racing for um, for Scott Jeffrey, who is, is as you know minds the store quite well. Uh, I don't know, Josh uh, Josh has got it. He's got it together. Three other names from out of that division. Uh, just want to touch on quickly. Christoph out of Holtville, the 57 CT. He's been to victory lane this year. A couple of drivers trying to get there, and they've been close on more than one occasion. And that, of course, would be Brawley's Cody Daffern and, and James Dupree and his number 84 machine. Yeah, um, as close as it is, as it is at the top, uh, these three. Well, actually, Chris Toth, Chris Toth is pretty close to, to being in that mix. He's only uh, he's four points out of first place. Um, Chris, I, I don't know. I can't figure out Chris. He's like up and down. He's he's hot one night and then he's cold as you know what the next. Uh, but I tell you, he you cannot overlook him. He could sneak in and win this thing without anybody even knowing it. Uh, as far as Cody goes. Cody gives it everything he's got every time he's out there, and um, uh, it's, it's, sooner or later it's, he's going he's gonna to get that win. I mean, he hasn't won one yet, but he's going to get it. He's fun. He's a young kid that, that's a. Uh, I think he defines. He has fun being out there. Really seriously, James Dupree. I've seen him do. Uh, he's, he's shown a lot of improvement here the last three or four races. And um, like I said, the law of averages and catch up with James too. He's going to be there. You watch. Yeah, a heat race win in there over those yep. uh, last few yep. events as well. Yep. well. Finally, the uh, Napa Auto Parts IMCA Hobby Stock. Uh, <laughs> superlatives. <laughs> superlatives. In, in terms, uh, in terms of the on-track action, we're seeing a uh, number of different cars to victory lane. We've now got Amy Teague back in that mix as well, but Evers and Wofford tied on top. <laughs> These are the lead sleds, Mike, and they are the most fun guys to watch. I mean, they are beating and banging. Well, I shouldn't say beating and banging. Occasionally, they trade some paint, but uh, Craig and Brent are putting on one heck of a show. And Amy T comes back out, what, two races ago and just rocks everybody's world and runs away with it. Uh, Brian Johnson, Mr. Consistent. Uh, uh, Jason Bashir's Mr. Consistent. They're missing, we're missing Leonard Manos, unfortunately. When Matt Sherrar shows up, it's fun to watch him out there. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a a great division. Uh, Evers and, and uh, Wolford, what is so funny about them is they work together, and I would love to be a fly on the wall at Alexander Toyota and Alexander Ford to see what's going on on Monday mornings after they race. That, that's a, it's, it's a fun deal. Uh, uh, I think uh, was it Craig told me last time he goes he's got two races to the breaks he go to the break he goes well, I'm going to put it back together with more bailing wire and duct tape. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he's just he's just a work I got to tell you that's that's been the refrain throughout the season and so far it's working. Yeah him. yeah I mean uh, he's what's that a Ford uh, uh, what is that he's driving it's a. Uh, LTD, I think, or I can't remember what it is. If anyway, memory serves anyway. me correctly. Yeah, yeah something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, my lord, and he bought it, bought a brand new nose piece for it. I mean, he, but he's into it. I mean, he loves what he's doing, and uh, he's a, he's a kick in the butt to talk to after he wins a race. I got to tell you. Do you think we can top last race tonight? Ah, it's going to be tough. Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, I mean, modifieds is anybody's race. Uh, sport mods anybody's race. Pro stocks anybody's race. Hobby stocks anybody's race. I mean, and street stocks any uh, street stocks anybody is anybody's race. Uh, if I was a betting man, I'd put my money on the modified division tonight and the street stock division because I want to see what what Adolfo comes back with this week to catch Manny. And uh, and we got Bobby, you got Lance, Ty, Chuck won't be there, but you, Bill Miller. Bill Miller's there. I mean, what he's he's fifth in the points, and that that says something. And you got Russell Allen, you got Cody Grabby, you got Steve McCullough, uh, Dwayne Rogers might be back this week. I don't know. Ryan Rose from Phoenix. I mean, it that is a great division to watch. It is just so fun. 
The prediction for tonight, excitement as always. As always. Randy, thank you very much for coming in and visiting with us this morning here on Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live. Randy Hafe with Into Photographics, the Yuma Sun, and YumaSun.com. And as we just noted, I know he's just as excited as I am to see what plays out tonight. Round number nine of the 2014 Cocopa Speedway Racing Series out at the Diamond in the Desert. As always, gates will open up at 5 p.m., opening ceremonies at 7 p.m. And to be sure you're fully up to speed on the racing to come tonight, be sure you stop by www.cocopaspeedway.com. Take a look at the updated point standings. You'll learn more about all of the drivers in competition at Cocopa Speedway. And, hey, make sure, too, you pick up a copy of Lap Time Magazine this afternoon when you're out at the Diamond in the Desert because you'll find lots of other cool stuff in there, including Randy's feature article, and it is always well worth the read. Hey, as we've noted previously, advance online ticket sales all also now open for the Winter Heat Sprint Car Showdown. Advanced purchases online only, also providing fans a limited pit pass good from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on each showdown event day. That is a limited time offer, so be sure to get in on those tickets soon. Again, all the lowdown on the showdown at CocopaSpeedway.com, where you can also pick up tickets for tonight's event, along with at Yuma Area Napa Auto Parts stores and also at the Cocopa Casino gift shop. Thank you once again, Randy Haight, for taking time out today to talk with us, helping to set the stage for action tonight in the Cocopa Speedway Racing Series. Again, gates open at 5, racing underway at 7 p.m. You've been listening to Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino. We'll be back with more next Saturday morning, 11 a.m., here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400.